All right, we are officially live, and uh, I think the audio is coming in clear. So it's super late at night, and a lot of us artists, tattooers, and uh, people in this community are used to being up late. But uh, tonight, it's going to be a little bit different. We're not tattooing. We're going to be um, just uh, <laughs> talking with a friend, actually. we got a friend here live with us. Um, you guys watching, we got 16 people live with us now. Um, I'm going to introduce my friend here. This is uh, Greg Sumi. He's got a tattoo shop here in uh, Fresno, California, actually a few shops. And yeah, we're just going to chop it up. So anybody watching, um, this is Greg Sumi. If you don't know him, I'm sure everybody watching probably knows you and a few people are wondering who I am. So uh, what's up, Greg? Yo, yo, how you guys doing? So this is uh, kind of early, actually, for, for in light of everything that's going on. Like this is typically late night, but I think everybody's time frames are off a little bit so everybody stays up late so you're right about that Probably fairly early mm -hmm. how, how late do you usually tattoo for um you mean just on an average night with like my work hours yeah because i think you, you 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 like to start somewhere around noon right yeah i do and i used to tattoo way later than i needed to um now i i aim to get off like around nine ish ten ish at the latest there are those nights that you're there till twelve thirty one. You don't have a choice, but right. for the most part, I'm I'm trying to get out of there around nine. Yeah. So this is getting getting there around noon noon to nine type of thing. Yeah. Cool. This is chill time. So things have changed a little bit over the last few months. Obviously, everybody watching's watching live. So this is um, weird times. Yeah. Weird weird times. Super yeah. weird. What do you think is it's like one of those things where you watch it happening? And you're like, is this really happening? And then you're two months into it, and you're like, yeah, this is this is reality. Right, a, to a total shift. What has been the, like? Because uh, I've experienced a few culture shifts, like in my, or a, a few lifestyle shifts that are uh, regarding like you know fitness. Uh, I've been taking that a lot more seriously lately and enjoying it because I have the time. Uh, you know, taking care of sure. art projects oh, yeah. and things that I just wouldn't have uh, you know otherwise had the time for. Or taken the, I more or less wouldn't have taken the time. So, have you been doing any of that? You know, coming into this, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be. I was like, I'm going to have all this time I didn't have. I'm going to do all this painting, all this art. And I think a big part of it was just I realized how much I fucking worked all the time. Like I tattooed my ass off on a regular basis. So my body, my mind, it just kind of embraced doing nothing for a while. And right. I found myself not wanting not being motivated to do a lot of that in the beginning now since from then till now yeah i've started painting i've, I've been working on a mural i've done a little bit of painting here and there not nearly as much as i would have thought i would have done um but there's just it's i think for a lot of people they're finding different shifts within themselves in the way they think um the things that they do the way that they deal with relationships and stuff and maybe ways they didn't expect so for me i've just been not creative and not motivated and i've been wanting to kind of steer away from social media and all these things that we're typically used to just engulfing our lives and and being so tuned into so i don't know i don't know i don't know what's going on it's just yeah that's, it's, i'm kind of enjoying that element yeah that's a big shift but, that's, um, that's actually, definitely worried too that's a lot of um that's actually probably the best part about this is the relief of like always being so you know overwhelmed with you know the business that we're trying to you know maintain and uh, being parents being right. business owners being artists being creative in general and wanting to usually embark on you know new things there's always so much on the plate so this is it's kind of cool to hear you say that actually because sometimes i feel almost a little bit um negligent that there's days dude i'm like i'm just gonna take a nap bro like i never take naps i'm gonna relax in the sun i'm just gonna sit right right just sit here right. and do nothing so that's pretty badass i want to know and then not feel guilty about it yeah. just yeah. just being like this is i really don't have anything to do and it's okay to do jack shit right now right you know yeah, that's, I, I like that a lot. That's pretty cool. That's probably been the most enjoyable part of this is, you know, no, there's no rush. And it's not that obviously we're afraid of that because I know you yourself, you, you work really hard, man. You, you, you put in long hours, you get, you get it done. You, you got a lot on your plate for sure. Um, you know, you got a good business going on. Too much, too much. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I pack my plate too much. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that for a second because I don't think we've ever really gone over this before. Um, you know, in our, in any of our conversations, like what is, what does that look like for you when it comes to work? Like, uh, regarding like just over, over stacking, you know, your, your amount of to-do lists. 
Uh, um, I think that's just my nature, who I am. Like I, I, I tell myself I'm not really an artist first. I'm a businessman first, artist second. I enjoy business. I enjoy growing things and and exploring and taking risks and trying things. Um, but in doing that, there, there's an energy that comes with that. And there's a high that comes with that. And just like anything, you can get addicted and do too much. And that's, I think, something that I've always dealt with, no matter what, um, we'll call it industry, that, that I've been in uh, to make money. That's just always been my, my kind of MO. Right. But this is this is really similar. I You know, it's just, I think even just sitting here hearing myself talk, it's I'm realizing it's really similar to when I, I had to go away for a while, you know. I'd, going and doing the amount of time that I did, you go from having responsibilities and people that you got to take care of and bills and all these different things that all of us have when we're adulting. And then you find yourself, you know, in this new world where it's very simplified and you don't have all these responsibilities. Um, there's different pressures and stuff in there, but for the most part, you're not adulting anymore. You just, you're just, you're just, pushing minutes, pushing, pushing hours, pushing time, you know? So that's really, really similar. I think everybody can get a little taste of that. Um, and what we're dealing with right now, for sure. I mean, um, there's definitely people that are still working. There's a lot of people that are still working. So they haven't really like changed that element of their life, but they're still tasting a little bit of, um, kind of time freezing a little bit right? and things being different with, with your day to day. Yeah. It's, it, I, I agree, man. Like, when it comes to the scheduling and, you know, I like that you said, you know, you, you're a businessman first and an artist second, because, you know, knowing a little bit about your story, if you're willing to share any of that too, in terms of, you know, how that started for you, you know, I know enough about it to ask that, you know, your, your beginning of, of painting, your beginning as a tattooer, um, you know, that stuff to me has always been intriguing just because, you know, I look at your work and I think like, man, like there's a few, especially here in Fresno, um, quite a few artists I can think of three right away that I look at their work and um, you know it's not just the first thing that other people say when they you know say oh do you know so-and-so or have you seen you know Greg's work I've heard you know um, Rob from Black Ink like I've heard his name so much I've, I've heard so many other people you know mention artists and you're definitely like the person I probably hear about the most and I don't even usually tell people that you know I know you or that you know I, that we're friends but um, I just let them go on and it's always good stuff so they're they're always appreciative of your art so if you can share with me like any any part of that because you know you said this is similar to when you were doing time like this is this is a uh, this is essentially I mean it's a lockdown in a different sense of course but um, what is that what does that look like for you in terms of like where you where you started with that in your art um weird weird i guess to be honest with you like i i i don't give i don't really look at myself as someone who's um pressed in the art uh, department my whole life and i finally arrived and and very proud of my work and all that it's it's really not like that it's something that i stumbled upon and um i feel like my end product is more just a, a, a product of my hard work and um when I saw this is the direction I wanted to go, I got just into the mode that I'm used to getting into when I when I see something like that, and it's just trying to learn everything I can and practice and put in the put in the effort and refine my skill and refine it, refine it, and then I end up with with what it is. Um, but it's weird to hear that because I, I I hear all these other, especially Rob, people like that, and to me. I don't group myself with them. I'm like, yeah, that dude's a bad motherfucker. Or like these other people, when I look at their work, I'm just like, yeah, they're so awesome. So it's weird to hear my name as part of that as much as I'm I'm not going to sit here and, and be naive, of, of course, you know, with, with the shops and stuff like that and the clientele that I've developed. Um, I know my work's solid, but I still, and I think all artists do this. You know what I mean? It's like we're our own worst critics, of course, but you envy what you don't do or what you don't have in your own skill set and you focus on that and that's kind of where I'm at you know I'm like yeah I can do these things okay and I'm happy that I've progressed to where I progress from but it's never good enough you're never as good as them um and that's 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 just how I feel and I think it's a good thing that's you you, you keep yourself chasing others and and hungry as fuck and that continues to refine what you do so yeah. but yeah I honestly 
I look at it a lot more technical in, in terms of, um, and instead of giving myself credit for the artistic side of it, um, I envy a lot of other artists and their raw, natural talent. So Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, not to necessarily like bring it up too much, but uh, Rob from Black Ink, that's, uh, and I've, I think I've mentioned this to you before that um, I might even mentioned it to him, so it's maybe not too much of a surprise, but man, his stuff is just like, it blows my mind, bro. Like that's, and I think I found his stuff through your, um, I think it was through your Instagram. Maybe you shared something he had done on you the first time I'd noticed his work. And, um, and it's kind of good right. to say like what you were talking about. Um, like my first question when I see his work and it's a similar question when I first saw yours, um, I remember seeing a painting. I think it was a, a painting. I don't want to say her name, but it was a, a painting of a lady, a famous lady. And it was just so impressive that it like caught my attention. I thought, man, like where do these people learn this shit? And I see Rob and I'm thinking the same thing. Like I look at his work and I think like, <laughs> what is he, where did he go? Who, like what guru sat down and said, Hey man, here's this <laughs> trick. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that dude's probably been drawing since, since I don't know, he can walk. I don't know. But like, yeah, his, what he has is just raw talent. I don't think he tries too hard. He just, he sits down and it's time to art, it's time to draw, it's time to tattoo, and that's what comes out. And that's what I admire and appreciate and envy. Um, for me, I got I gotta work for my shit. Yeah. I gotta break it down. I gotta study it. I gotta I gotta understand it. I gotta practice and try it um, before I can get to an end product that's comparable. It just doesn't come out naturally like I think that it does for Rob, to be honest with you. Yeah, I feel you on that. So you know, it's no, it's nothing new to people that are creative or, or that are artists or even entrepreneurs, which I think is almost, I mean, in a lot of ways, just very respectfully similar. Um, we are our own worst critics and I've seen, it seems like to me, the people who I've admired the most in terms of their skill or, or their product or whatever there are even, um, are people who have the most like almost inner turmoil in terms of like what it is they're producing and how it comes out. And, um, uh, and it, and knowing that actually, as an artist myself has helped me because you don't necessarily feel so alone or that you're, you know, there's something wrong with you because sometimes that, that feeling can be pretty intense and you're, um, almost like you're just so dissatisfied with your, you know, end product, but everybody else keeps, you know, kind of praising it or, you know, paying it, paying it respect or whatever. And you're just like, I just got to walk away from it. Cause I feel like I could have done better. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, hundred percent what plagues us. Yeah. I heard and actually, so, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I was watching, uh, somebody, it was a tattoo artist. I can't remember who it was. It was months ago. Um, actually about a month ago, right. When all this kind of stuff shut down happened and, um, in the background, someone had asked what, or maybe it was a comment. He asked, uh, what is, when is art finished? Um, or, or what is, what makes good art? And he said, well, first off, an artist has to know that art is never done, but that it's abandoned. And so I don't, I'm going to guess that's like a famous quote or from somebody significant, but I it's think it's a cool quote. Yeah. I think that's true. Like art's never finished. It's abandoned. What do you think about that? I think that's a, a very true statement and it's a very encouraging statement for someone like myself too, because I mean, we're always ser searching and seeking perfection in what we do. Um, and when we're done or when we say we're done with a piece, we're not really done because we look at it and it's like, Oh, I should have done this or I could have done this or I wish I would have done that. So, I mean, I, I can completely relate, relate to that for like back to, to my own, I can talk about myself and, and, and how I art, I guess if that's what I call it is. Um, but it started out so technical. It started out so technical and trying to learn how to create, how to create imagery, um, that, that looks polished professional and all of that. And, um, that's a difficult thing to do, but I feel like for myself, I have passion, such passion in everything that I do. So the passion combined with that really took me pretty far. But the one thing that I didn't have that I feel that true artists have is that emotional madness that of your life that you bring into your art and it wasn't until, you know, recently, year, you know, maybe a few years back that I understood that, that I understood that true, like really good art is not just technically polished art, but it's when you can see a glimpse of that person's um, emotion in there, whether it's 
sorrow, whether it's anger, happiness, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But once that merges in with that, that's when I'm able to really recognize good art. And I'm not even saying that I'm there, but I started understanding that and allowing my own um, life's emotion to kind of come into my art. And I, I feel like at that point is when I started to feel um, it at least feeling a little more natural, a little a little more natural in terms of what I did and not so technical. And it's it, it feels a lot better. Yeah. So, I, you know, whatever all that means, all that rambling means, but it's something that's new to me, believe it or not. You know, I think a lot of other artists, I look at them and I at least I don't know their stories. But when I look at their art, I'm like, I see that I see their passion. I see their 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 life in that art. And I envy that because it seems so so natural and you can't replicate that you can't right yeah that's it's a weird thing because i'm not sure myself um whether or not art or creativity or uh you know teaching that is or or learning it along the way or becoming it later on for whatever reason um i've never really been sure that it's something that is um necessarily teachable i think it's i've always felt like it's something a little more intuitive for the person to express you know something inside to the point where they're willing to be vulnerable and show it on the outside usually like musicians and artists um but for you you know your story is different like let's say um when you started your artistic career or you started uh even your first painting which we've talked about before um what what point in your life was that like how old were you and before that what was your um artistic history like what was your what was your um, experience with it before that? Um, it was it, it was pretty much later in life, and it was not something that I was looking for or trying to do. It kind of, it's weird. Sounds sounds kind of I don't know cliched or whatever, but it, it fell in my lap. It was something that just happened, and it's not normal. So it's also a reason why I really can't take much credit for it. Um, like I've worked hard for it. it; just kind of fell in my lap, and it was later in life. I like to draw as a kid, um, kid being, you know, elementary school years. And I think I was okay. Definitely wasn't like amazing or anything. Um, and then lost interest. I wasn't, I definitely wasn't that guy in high school that drew all the time. I was into all types of other shit. Um, and then later in life, I'm going to give you the very fast version. This is boring, but later in life, that's, you know, I'm an adult. I find myself in prison. Um, I got a pretty lengthy sentence and it wasn't until towards the end of that, that I stumbled upon it as a, a hobby to get me to calm down and, and get my outdate on time and all of that. And that's kind of when I discovered it and it, it happened very fast. And, um, as the business person that I am, I realized like, Holy shit, like this is actually something that maybe I can feed my family off of. And so then I just, I just took it really serious and I got as many art, painting magazines and tattoo magazines and devoured them and read every word in them editors notes ads it didn't matter i just wanted to understand it all and um just started painting my ass off and and tattooing a lot and then that's kind of where 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 i my origins are you know so they're not they're not really that uh impressive or you know that it's not this timeline of me going to art college and doing all this stuff so well what i would say yeah i don't is uh that i I don't agree with you that it's not impressive because um, I don't. I've never met anybody that uh, at any point in their later life or, or even you know in their twenties that didn't show some inkling of um, you know artistic ability or need to uh, you know share themselves in that way through an artistic medium that one day just you know comes out. Not I say that was one day. It was a development period in your life, but uh, that discovers that right. that's quite. Um, I mean that's. It's actually pretty remarkable, but I mean, it's also a gift. Like, it makes me think really about uh, tying that into the, you know today's current situation with this stay in place, sheltering order, the COVID situation. That um, you know, there's a lot of people that I have a good feeling. You know, instead of all the negativity that's out there all the time, that I have a feeling um, people are going to come out of this. Some people are going to come out of this with skills and um, you know other things that they've. De- either discovered or developed along the way that are going to massively 100% beneficial for their lives. I think, 100%. I think, yeah. I think I, I, I definitely see the same thing. There's going to be so much more um, self-realization and positive stuff that I think people will begin to, to identify that has happened in the midst of all this in their lives um, personally, in their outlooks or perspectives and figuring stuff out about themselves. It's like, it's kind of a cool reset 
that no one wanted or expected but were forced upon us that made us pause the rat race, uh, made us pause the distractions, made us pause the, the petty arguments with, with loved ones or family members, um, made us pause the obsession with social media and trying to keep up with all of that. And it just kind of forced us to kind of look in the mirror for a moment and and re reintroduce ourselves with ourselves, I guess is a, is a way I can put it, you know? And, and I think in doing that, a lot of people are going to come out um, in different ways. And I, I really don't see in situations and other situations, hold on, I got my low, low power on my phone. In other situations, when, when something happens, there's usually some good and then some bad that can come out of it. But I really see very little bad. I don't see a lot of people coming out of this and being a worse person or um, coming out with some bad habit or something like that. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I see it as more of a positive thing. That's cool. That's a different, that's a unique perspective because, um, you know, I think people have a tendency and when I say people, I include myself, of course, um, we have a tendency to look at things like social media, um, you know, the news, uh, I mean, f to be honest with you, I get, if there's any news, I usually get it from articles online or I'm actually watching it through reposts on YouTube. Um, and it's easy for us to get a certain filtered version and everybody's aware that it happens. We get a, a filtered version of reality that you know and everything that's going on currently that uh kind of strikes a certain sort of narrative that doesn't always inspire greatness or i don't want to say happiness i mean um but it's it's a little bit of that too but it's more like people i think uh they get so locked into it's this. not marketable yeah it, right it's yeah hard yeah work, like news has there. to be shitty yeah, yeah that, it's because it's got to serve that quick fix, like short attention, goldfish, mm -hmm. you know, span of attention like that. Right. That's what it's got to be. It's <laughs> got to hold that. Um, so we we tend clickbait stuff. A hundred percent. So we tend to to just oversaturate ourselves with that in our lives. And um, I, I kind of wonder because I don't know, I'm not around enough people right now to see this, but I wonder if um, if people are taking this time to almost detox from that or. I'm afraid sometimes people are probably um, doing the opposite. They're 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 finally now because they have the time to sit around doing it, getting hooked to something maybe they should have stayed away from in the first place. Right. So right, that can happen too for sure. Greg, I got um I got a bunch of questions. Uh, not necessarily questions, but uh, comments. People came in here. I forgot to really say at the beginning, but I do encourage people to like comment on here and if they have any questions or if they want to say anything to either me or Greg, then uh, feel free to. But since I want to respect your time, it's already getting late. Um, I would like to get to a few of these um, right here. But okay. also before I do that, let's do it. I also want to know um, anybody that's well. Again, I'm assuming people that are watching it are wondering who I am and uh, quite aware of who you are. I think you've made and respectfully saying this that you've made. Quite yeah, I don't. So. I don't think that's necessarily the case, Josh. Well, we'll find out. I don't think um, so. So <laughs> this is uh, this is a good time for me to ask you from an artist to an artist, um, where, where can people not just find you? Um, but what are you working on right now? To, um, like wh where are you going with your businesses? Like, what do you see in the near future that might, if any, cause you seem pretty, um, you know, uh, uh, I would say positive about the outlook. Where do you see yourself going from here on out? Like this is, this is a pretty unique situation. Sure, man. Um, I think what's kind of a tantalizing thought is down sizing is tattooing less um and that might not be to the average person the average tattoo artist that doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to tattoo a little bit i tattooed too much so tattooing less for me is is tattooing five days a week one one appointment a day or something like that you know instead of six days a week one to two appointment a day you know solid eight, nine hour days. So that, that's one thing that I think that, um, this little reset has given me perspective on. Um, and also making time to paint, you know, making time to paint, I feel is something that my soul needs and that my artistry needs and that my clients will very much benefit from. So kind of a balance, um, in my time with those things. And that also includes with that balance is, is uh, spending more time with with family and the people that matter and ultimately the reason why i work so hard so um we can lose perspective of that pretty pretty easy i think 
That's cool, man. Um, I'll be honest with you, Greg. I wasn't because you know I haven't really talked to you in the last month um, personally, but uh, I w- I don't know that I was expecting. And I hope you don't take this necessarily offensively, but I wasn't expecting it to be uh, like, I think you made me feel better actually after this conversation. Like it's nice to hear you say these things yeah. because I actually think it's, um, it's, it's something I was, um, I was talking to a friend about today, uh, earlier today that it's easy for us to talk about all the problems, but sometimes we forget that we can actually do a lot of good uh, for ourselves and our community and our, just our families in general. We can do a lot of good by uh, trying to find, like almost if you have to even force it, find the good that's in the situation, um, make use of it because mm-hmm. like it's it's weird that I was thinking about that earlier and how important it is we do it and now here you are doing it and you're making me and probably many other people on here. Um, it, it's like hopeful. That sounds so cheesy, but that's that's what it feels like. So that's cool <laughs> and I appreciate it. Uh, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, take it, take it how it comes. <laughs> I'm going to get some uh, questions in here. It's actually, again, it's not questions. It's just people commenting, uh, and it's it's cool. So I see Andrew on here. Uh, he's got his praying hands saying agreed. So I'm not sure what he's necessarily saying he's agreeing to, but I'll just assume it's everything. <laughs> and, oh, Thaxer. Thaxer, nice, yeah. Yeah, uh, Thaxer is another one of those artists that I kind of look from the outside looking in and envy his life, his artistry. Um the passion that he that he has for both life and art and how they kind of merge um and he gives less fucks and it's a beautiful thing yeah that's because cool. he knows how to enjoy life and hobbies and the things that matter to him and then it reflects in, in your work you know for sure i feel the same way when um since he's obviously watching whenever i see him fishing you know because my dad uh, he drug me to going fishing. I, I appreciate it, but uh, I fished so much as a kid. We lived in Oregon and in the woods and, in, in, you know, in, uh, the, out in the country a lot of times. So fishing was a huge part of my growing up. And so whenever I see him fishing, it's like I fishing to me, I avoided it at all costs because I, I, I think I got burnt out as a kid. Um, and <laughs> he's probably going to laugh at that and think you're crazy. You can't get burnt out fishing. But whenever I see him post pictures of what he loves to do, whether it's tying flies or, uh, you know, fishing and catching it and whatever it's like it's the same well his thing. picture his pictures aren't of him with a pole in his hand <laughs> it's with a beautiful brown or a rainbow trout right. or some savagery you know like so right. it's not hard to to love fishing when you're pulling them in like that yeah we exactly and and <gasps> when we see that i think again it's kind of cool because you know you see your artists you know breaking their backs and slaving away and everybody always comes up to the artist and says uh to the patient or to the client um you know how does that feel and nobody's ever asking the artist like how do you feel so uh, at least not too often. So it's kind of cool to see that we're out there enjoying sure. doing what we love. Um, so, <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's get a couple more. Um, so Crystal's on here saying she's uh, excited that she's catching it live, which is cool, dude, because, you know, this is the first time me and you have done this together before. Nice, nice. Let's see, we got um, Anita on here also. She's Anita Sue is saying always find the good and the blessings in the time of need. Uh, and that's kind of similar to what we were talking about before, because, you know, my dad mm-hmm. actually did specifically tell me one time uh, that you have to find the good in the bad. And man, has that been ringing true? It seems like a lot lately and as in generally in society. Um, yeah, no doubt. No so doubt. There was a few other people on you here. I want to look. Um, Amber's on here saying hello from one artist to another. Hello, Amber, from one artist to another. It's nice to see you're tuning in. and I'm assuming kind of kind of in the same boat, yeah, relating she, to a lot of what we're saying. Yeah, she's doing, uh, she does um, cosmetology-related uh, barbering or hairstylist, and I think, I think she yeah, mostly does. Yeah, same that. situation. Yep, for sure. Yeah, same situation. We have, uh, I'm going to bring this on. I, I think Andrew uh, Thaxter was on here, and I think he was commenting off of his wife's page. I'm um, not exactly sure, but this is Brittany. Uh, saying Valley Unique Electric. Sup, this is Andrew. So I'm assuming that means he was on her page. Oh, tell him about the hat I'm wearing. <laughs> okay, there you go. Perfect. I figured it had something to do with you because yeah. I had no idea what Valley Unique Electric was. Yeah. Is that, that's a local business? It's a local business, yeah. It's, I, I inadvertently am supporting my local business and promoting it. Cool. Yeah, it's a client of mine. It's a friend of mine's client. He gave me the hat. Um, and it's got red on it, so it matches my shirt. So I'm wearing the hat. Legitimate. And the plug goes to him. Yeah. Legitimate. Yeah, we color synced. I got my red sign in the back. Good observation. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Your 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 whole background and scene looks so much doper than my 
weird lighted white background. Right. Well, uh, we'll we'll get you up to uh, up to par here pretty soon and get your setup rock and rolling so we we can do more of this because uh, I think this is pretty cool. Rochelle, my sister, you know my sister. She, you guys have met. You've tattooed her. Yes. She said great success story, and so that's um, obviously from coming from earlier and not you know. Thank you. I think that's pretty cool. So there's Thank a lot you. of people on here showing respect, um, agreeing a lot of agreeing. So that's pretty cool. I don't see actually any questions. I think this is the first time. Maybe everybody's kind of, God, Greg, you got him speechless, brother. Just taking it in. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't got him speechless. They're just like, oh, we're all normal. Yeah. We're all fucked up. Um, Marcus is on <laughs> we here. We all have a story. Marcus is on here. Marcus Bredo, he's saying. Oh, whatever, bro. Yeah. Effing love, Greg. I won't say the word, even though I say that word a lot. Yeah, he's a good dude. Good dude, man. Very, very talented, speaking about talent. Very talented and a very passionate individual. And um, I have a lot of respect for that dude. He went in uh, military ex. Uh, I don't know what he actually did, but I know that he definitely served and did a tour. So he put it down, Marcus. That's a, that's uh, always has my respect. Yeah, for people like that, especially artists that pause their artistry and go and do some serious lifing like that and sacrificing, um, and then come back back to their normal artist selves like that's impressive to me yeah that's cool i i um if anybody wants to go on his page um he's i think the first person on this um thread to actually comment so if you guys want to go see if he performs does live music uh very interesting dude um so yeah there we go that's uh i think let's see if there's i still don't see i don't this is the first time ever man this is a record I, there's no questions but uh, i got a few other people i got jeff on here jeff pickens is saying mm -hmm. what's up um Let's see. What up, yeah? Yeah, I think that's. I was trying to look. I was scanning all the people's. Uh, let's see before we get off because we are actually um, laid here in questions. Sometimes they come up faster on my phone. Um, Andrew is saying, "When you plan on opening, guys? When you plan on opening?" When we're told that we can. Apparently, we follow orders these days so that's yeah um that's cool. when i'm when i'm told <laughs> that I, they're going to revoke a business license or or uh give us a i think it was a hundred thousand dollar fine is what actually they put out there right um then yeah I'm, i don't want no problems yeah that's correct i think that all of us if we have to feed our families we feed our families and that just might mean the door opens for a client to walk in and then it, and it closes and locks but as far as like opening for business um i don't know i don't know i'm told i don't know how accurate this is but i told i was told today that clovis is apparently opening up everything next week or monday or something like that um and then of course we all know the fresno order is till the 31st right. through this month so we'll see yeah we'll I think, see i think my answer to that's uh pretty much the exact same other than uh, embellishing on the Clovis part because that's actually where I'm located. So they did give us, so far as I've read, see, if you read these articles about um, and regarding any of these situations, they're all so suggestive because they're not necessarily rules or laws. There they're are a lot of suggestions. You know, I've seen a lot of that. Even with um, anybody in sure. cosmetology, they've all gotten their um, notices about, you know, their state board license. And if you read it really closely, uh, you, you, I mean, you need a lawyer almost to, interpret it because they're using specific words for a reason because they're not telling you you can't they're actually wording it and i, I don't really want to go off on that because right that's a it's kind of a different issue but um clovis isn't nobody's like giving you a thumbs up saying it's a go it's more of they basically said everybody voted so far as i saw that everybody voted for us to uh, end the shelter in place and that doesn't mean anything passed or went through or that it's legal or not it just says Sure. They're over. Well, there's so much that's not legal. There's so much that is unconstitutional that they're telling us we can and can't do. So I think that's why the wording is very strategic and um, the way that they say or encourage us to do one thing or another. Um, right. But at the end of the day, like this isn't going to be something that's for the rest of our lives. In my opinion, it's it's going to blow over soon and at, and at some point. So I'm going to write it out and and open it when they tell me I'm supposed to or I can, yeah. whether I agree with it or not. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. So following Clovis's suit that um, they say we're open and a lot of people are excited about it, um, I'm going to conduct business as usual other than currently scheduling appointments, um, you know, anything new. So if anybody's wondering or asking, 
Um, I'm going to do all my stuff online through email in terms of uh, making appointments, but I'm scheduling them out far enough that I know, yeah, you know, I'm pretty comfortable in knowing that at least the order will be lifted by, you know, summertime. And if not, then I honestly think we have a whole nother level of issues, but we don't have to cover all that now. So that's, I'm really just working yeah. on customer. And, relationship. and there'll, there'll be a different level of, of concern. Um, if it does end up getting ridiculously far, none of us are going to sit around and not feed our families. Yeah. Um, so that's not something that I'm overly concerned about. And it's a fight that I'm ready to fight if that ever comes to be where we as artists um, have to band together and say, look, you know, we, we need to feed our families. This is this, this is our income. 100 percent. Regardless, if you want to give us twelve hundred bucks a month, you know, that does nothing. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I don't think a lot of people quite understand, too. And and again, I'm always pretty respectful of both points of view because everybody's in a totally different spot looking, trying to look at the same thing. But. Um, it seems very confusing for a lot of us and, and depending on where we're at. And I, I don't think a lot of people can kind of understand what it's like to, you know, not just have one rent or one bill or one PG and E and have multiple, if, if not many more. And, um, so something like unemployment or a stimulus checks, not going to cover your PG and E for all of your right. facilities. So it's, it's hard for them to kind of sympathize or understand that too, right. respectfully. Um, okay. So. Let's see. Uh, uh, Thaxter said he's moving to Clovis. Thaxter, you're more than welcome here in Clovis. Nah. We'd love to have you. Uh, we're closer to fishing, I believe, anyway, so that would be rad. Um, Jeff Picks Pickens again is Start on. off with a guest spot over at High Sierra. Yeah, there you go. Start out with a guest spot. Yep, we'll, we'll support everybody to get it, get it rolling. Jeff uh, Pickens said Visalia is, Visalia is waiting for Newsom to say okay. I think everybody is waiting for... Um, yeah. Good old master Newsome over there. Let's see if there's another good, solid, solid artist. I don't know Jeff personally, but his work is, is known. So I think solid, solid artist me and you, dealing with the same thing. We have a similar uh, taste in terms of traditional artists. Uh, you know, I I only like traditional art tattooed on me typically, but uh, I don't like doing it, which people find odd. Yeah, I don't do it, but I love it. Yeah. I, I love traditional the imagery. Daxter knows that. Yeah, I'm the same way um, for sure. Yeah. Pickens' work, work is very well known, very well known, very well respected artist. Yep. Yeah, Andrew's uh, also agreeing. He's saying Jeff's the best. I wonder if, uh, since they're both watching, letting them know that um, while we're all sheltering in place and have this extra time, I uh, coaxed Greg into coming on here with me. So if you guys are in. Yeah, you guys are next. Yeah, you, you guys are next. You guys got to join <laughs> the ranks. So I'm going to bring you on here and we'll, we'll talk about whatever you guys like. So let's see. Um, yeah, we got we got a lot of people, a lot of support on here. I I appreciate everybody. That's that's pretty badass. That's cool. Thank you guys all. Yeah. So Greg, um, I will let you go. It's getting late. Enjoy your evening. Um, I would love to do this again with some. Thank you, sir. I'm going to for anybody. Yeah, watching, I'm around. I'm around. For anybody watching and um, for you too is, uh, this is going to be reposted on YouTube. Um, and I'm probably going to cut up a couple clips too as well and kind of remember that it's there throughout the next coming days. Um, and if you know anybody, and if anybody watching knows anybody that's interested in um you know getting on here and sharing some of this and talking anything from art tattooing to the current situation then uh, feel free to but greg i truly appreciate you man as one artist to another um i respect you massively everybody that's watching thank you and uh we'll do this again sometime brother likewise cool take it easy brother thank you have a good one